Let's take our Bibles to Genesis chapter 13. I want to draw our attention to the first four verses only this morning. That's a little bit of a left turn from how I've been doing Genesis. I've tried to get through most of the chapters in one week, but we'll just do the first four verses this morning. I want to recap chapter 12 for you. As we look at the uh, two themes of chapter 13, these first four verses, the two key themes of the message this morning are going to be repentance and finding forgiveness. Repentance and finding forgiveness. But we must recap chapter 12, or we probably won't really remember why chapter 13 deals with repentance and finding forgiveness. It's not a it's not a real uncommon thing to to go back in a book you've been reading. Maybe you haven't been able to read it for a couple days, and the next time you pick it up, you thumb back through the through the pages to look to see what was going on and just kind of refresh your memory. And that's what we're doing here, uh, chapter twelve. If you remember, God called Abram to leave his father's house. God called Abram to leave the land that he was living in, and and God told Abram, "Go to a land that I'm going to show you." Now, Abram did this, and it's, it was quite a step of faith for Abram because God never showed him the land before He called him out, and yet Abram went anyway. He went by faith. He and his wife Sarai and a very few others of his father's house departed. Now, remember, Abram at this time, Abram and Sarai, that was their name. God later would change their name to Abraham and Sarah. I probably have the tendency to just go ahead and call them Abraham and Sarah, but I try my best at this point in the narrative to call them by what their names were. But Abram uh, obeyed God's call, and things were going well, pretty well in chapter 12. Uh, Abram built an altar to God near Bethel, and he was walking by faith and worshiping God, and uh, everything was going according to how God expected Abram to do. And that's a great application for us as we are called to walk by faith. And we are called to worship God according to how He expects us to worship Him. Now, how does God expect us to worship Him? Well, it's found in the Bible. Every way that God wants us to worship Him is found in the Holy Word of God. And I think we do a great job of that at Post Oak with our songs. We we sing. That's a worship that we do to God. We sing hymns and praise and worship to Him. We publicly read the Word of God. That's a means of worship. We, uh, we publicly pray. We publicly pray together. We publicly confess sin. All of these things as we go through our bulletin, those are all prescribed ways to worship God according to His words. So things are going pretty well for for Abram on his journey, but then in the midst of chapter 12, things kind of take a little bit of a turn for the worse. Doesn't it always seem that that's the way it happens when things are going well? You're up on the mountain, all of a sudden, boom, we crash down into the valley. And Abram runs into a famine. And he takes Sarai, his wife, and, and into Egypt. And before they get to Egypt, you'll remember, Abram tells Sarai to tell everyone that she is his sister. Well, Abram did this because he knew the custom of the Far East at the time. He knew a pharaoh, the pharaoh of the land, had saw how beautiful Abraham or uh, Abraham's wife Sarai was. He would have he would have killed Abram. He would have killed him, and and he would have taken Sarai into his palace to be one of his wives. Well, we know what happens, don't we? Sarai told the people that she was Abram's sister and she was taken into the Pharaoh's palace anyway to be one of his wives. Now, thankfully, because God is a faithful God, and I want to stress that, God is a faithful God, and God had already made promises to Abram in the beginning of chapter 12, and those promises were this, I will bless you. And He didn't stop there. He said, I will bless all nations if they bless you, and I will curse the nations that curse you. And God did indeed bring a curse upon Pharaoh and his house, as we see from Genesis 12 and verse 17, the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. And God in His mercy and grace kept the Pharaoh from touching Abram's wife. I always chuckle a little bit when I when I read that portion because I think 
when Pharaoh says to Abram, well, if you'd have just told me she was your wife, then everything would have been okay. (laughs) And Abram had to be thinking, no, old chap, you would have killed me, and you still would have taken her to be your wife. At any rate, at the end of the day, Abram really messed up, didn't he? Abram really messed up. And that's one of the things about the Bible when people will say to us, well, the Bible's made up fairy tales. But the Bible never, it never shies away from showing the weaknesses of the saints of God. It never shies away from showing the sins of the saints of God. You would think if, if the Bible was just written by one individual who was trying to deceive everyone, that the last thing they would put in here are the, the sins and the, the deceptions and the, the, the faults and the weaknesses of the people of God. But those are some of the things that teach us the greatest lessons in life. Abram really messed up by not trusting God's promises, by saying Sarai was his sister and not his wife. And so my question to us this morning is this, have we ever really messed up? Well, I think we probably are all honest, and I think we all know the answer to that question. Have we ever really messed up like Abram did here? Well, the solution then is found really with one of two options. When we mess up, there are really only two options. Number one, you can continue on that path that you're on, and you can keep messing up, keep sinning, and keep rebelling against God. Or number two, you can turn from that path That's called repentance, turning. You can turn from that path and you can get back to Jesus. You can either stay on the path you're on, keep sinning against God and keep messing up, or you can turn from that path, repent and get back to Jesus. And you might be thinking this morning, well, preacher, you don't know how badly I've messed up. And I would answer that with this. It doesn't matter how badly you messed up. Your two options remain the same. It doesn't matter how how badly you messed up. You can either keep messing up really badly or you can turn from that path and get back to Jesus. You might say, well, preacher, you don't know how many times I've messed up. doesn't matter. Your two options are still the same. You might be thinking, well, you don't know how many people I've hurt messing up. You might be thinking, you don't know how many times I've done the same mess up over and over again. I mean the very same one over and over again. Your two options remain the same. And with that in mind, I want to bring us to the first four verses of Genesis 13. Here we find a man named Abram who messed up royally. And he hurt people with his mess up. And yet he was a man of faith. He understood his options were to either continue on that path of messing up or to turn from that path and get back to Jesus. That's an interesting contrast the Christian life is, isn't it? Because oftentimes we do royally mess up, don't we? I mean, we do. We mess up. And and our lives are interesting contrast because we're We're still sinners who mess up every day, and simultaneously, we're people of faith. And that's what Abram shows us. We mess up, but we're people of faith who trust in the Lord. And our options, you know, sometimes we even continue on that same path of messing up, and we don't turn, and we don't get on the right path, and we don't get back to Jesus for a while. And then Jesus has to go and take us behind the woodshed. God has to take us behind the woodshed sometimes. Right? We don't like it and it hurts. But we find our way back to God. So what did Abram do? Well, I want you to look at Genesis 13, verses 3 and 4. And he went on his journeys from the south even to Bethel, under the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Hai, under the place of the altar which he made there at first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. You know what Abram did? He went back to that altar. He went back to that altar. You say, where is that altar? Well, there's an interesting little phrase in verse 3 where it says where it had been at the beginning. That altar in Bethel or near Bethel was the first altar that Abram built in Genesis 12 after God called him out of the land. That was a very special altar. 
That was an altar that showed that Abram understood what God expected of him, that Abram understood what true worship was, and that Abram was going to walk by faith. Now that altar is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when in chapter 12, when Abram really messed up, We find him in chapter 13 getting back to that altar. Do we know what that means? That means he was getting back to Jesus. He chose option two. He didn't stay on that path of messing up. He repented, got off that path, and got back to that altar, which was a picture of Jesus. He found forgiveness. And so, the point of the message is this this morning. It doesn't matter how badly we've messed up or how many people... Well, it does matter, but understand what I'm saying here. How badly we mess up, how many people we hurt by our sin, how many times we do the same sin over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. It doesn't matter. Don't choose the path that keeps you on that way. Turn. Repent. And find forgiveness in Jesus this morning. Abram knew he had to get back to that altar near Bethel because that's where he first worshipped God. And again, I can't stress it enough, that altar is a picture of Christ. Now as I close the sermon this morning, there are three principles that encourage us, I think, from the life of Abram to get off the sinful path by repenting and finding forgiveness and getting back to Jesus. This is what Abram learned And this is what he teaches us from these first four verses. The three principles we find in Abram that encourage us to turn from sin and get back to Christ are these. Number one, eternal satisfaction. Eternal satisfaction. Number two, restoration renewed. Restoration renewed. And number three, authentic worship. Real quickly, okay? Real quickly, if we don't repent and get back to Jesus, we'll never find these things in our life. If we stay on the sinful path, we will never find those three things in our life. Total satisfaction, restoration renewed, and authentic worship. The first one we see is eternal satisfaction. Look at verses 1 and 2 of chapter 13. And Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had, and Lot with him into the south. And I want you to notice verse number 2. Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Abram was a very wealthy man. And I believe at this point in his life, he could have just ignored God's promises and said, you know what, I'm doing all right on my own. I've got all this cattle, I've got all this silver, I've got all this gold. Abram was wealthy, Abram was powerful. He could have had just about anything he wanted at that point. But here's what Abram understood, and I want you to get a hold of this thing this morning. Abram understood material things did not bring true satisfaction. Now, the older we get in life, the more we understand that. I was talking to a friend of mine at a school function the other day, Amelia, and his daughter was there, and we were talking about just life. We went to school together, and it had been a while. Well, it hadn't been too long, but we hadn't sat down and talked for as long as we did. And uh, I, you know, we just got to talking about different things. And one of the things I told him, you know, if I was about 10 years younger, I'd go back to law school. Because that's always kind of been a passion of mine. And I think we really are going to need Christian lawyers in this uh, day and age. Because Christians are going to be in trouble and we're going to need some people that are going to be able to stand up for them. Neither here nor there. He, he said, you know what, I had a friend that about your age that did the same thing. He said, so don't think you can't do it. And, but, but his point was this. He wasn't trying to make millions and millions of dollars and get the biggest house in Cookville. He said all he wanted to do was to help people. I said, that's exactly my desire. I want to help people. Because I understand material things don't bring true satisfaction. Now, every now and then again, Amelia will remark about somebody's big house and say, wow, I wish that was our house. And she'll remark about this and that. And those things are fine. There's nothing wrong with having those things. But, but at the end of the day, what's the old saying? The, the, U, the, the hearse doesn't pull a U-Haul behind it. Because you just can't take our stuff with us. Right? We can't take our stuff with us. What shall it profit a man if we gain the whole world and lose our soul? And if Abram would have continued on the sinful path, and if he never would have repented and returned to God to find forgiveness, he would have lost his own soul. And all those material things that he had at that point. And see, I think by God showing us that Abram was very rich in cattle and silver and gold, He's showing us there's nothing wrong with having material things. It just depends on how we treat those material things. 
things, you see. Because if Abram would have lost his own soul, none of those things would have mattered. None of those things would have mattered. You remember the story of the rich man and Lazarus? One had everything he needed here on earth. The other was a poor beggar. But the poor beggar, Lazarus, had nothing here on earth. But he had turned from his sinful path and he found eternal satisfaction and glory. The rich man who had everything here below never turned and he never found total satisfaction because he never found Christ. And yet in Abram we find a rich man who had so much wealth and so much power here below, but unlike that rich man in the story of the rich man Lazarus, Abram turned from that path of sin because he understood eternal satisfaction is only found in God. Abram didn't have to get back to God at that point. He could have tried to make a name for himself. He could have tried to make himself even wealthier and more powerful. But he wanted God more. He wanted eternal satisfaction. Do we? Do we want eternal satisfaction? It's only found when we turn from that path of sin and we find our hope in Christ. Again, There's nothing wrong with having things, material things. But when we treat those material things as if they're more important to us than God in Christ, that's when they become a problem for us. True satisfaction is found when we repent and get back to Jesus. We return to our first love. Our first love. The other thing Abram found was restoration renewed. And we see this in verses 3 and 4. I won't read it again. We've already read it several times this morning. But when Abram got back to that altar, you know what he did? He repented of his sin. He got back to God. He found forgiveness. He knew he had messed up. He knew he had really dropped the ball by lying and not trusting God's promises. He understood that but he found restoration for that. I think so many times we as Christians, we, we wallow in our sin and our guilt. And we never move on. We don't, we don't believe God's promises. God says, if we confess our sins, 1 John 1, 9, He is faithful and just. If you know it, say it with me, to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from what? All unrighteousness. Every last bit of it. And yet we hold on to that. We cling to that. And we wallow in our sin and our guilt. That's why every Sunday morning when we confess corporately and then we confess individually, one of the things I say is we raise our heads, we lift our eyes to the Gospel of Jesus Christ. We don't have to keep our heads held low. Yeah, we've messed up. Boy, yeah, we've messed up. And yeah, we've messed up already this morning. We're going to mess up this afternoon. We're going to mess up this evening. We're going to mess up in our sleep, probably. How do you do that? I don't know. But we, if anybody can do it, we can. Right? We're going to mess up tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. And we're going to keep messing up. What have we got to do? We've got to repent and give back to Jesus. Find forgiveness. All our sin has been paid for by Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Do we believe that, church? Do we believe that? I'm about to get all uh, Pentecostal. Can I get an amen up in here? Do we believe that all our sins have been paid for in Christ? If we do, then let them go. He's removed them. He's put them behind them. They're as removed as far as the east is from the west. Stop bringing them out of the closets. Stop bringing those skeletons out of the closet. Don't put them back in the closet. Throw them in the sea like God did. Okay? Final thing. We've got to get back to God. We've got to get back to our first love, as Revelation 2 told us. We've got to get off the wrong path. We've got to stop wallowing in guilt and sin. We find eternal satisfaction. We find restoration renewed. And then finally, we find authentic worship. You see... Abram got back to where he first truly understood what worship was. When we're heading down the wrong path, we're not worshiping God. I want to say that. I want to stress that. When we know we're on the wrong path, and when we know there's sin in our life, and when we're not repenting of that sin, when we're not confessing that sin, we can't expect God to bless us. I've been there. Done that. <laughs> you know, I've got the 
uh, 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 whatever to show for it. The certificate to show for it. There'd be unconfessed sin in my life. And, and, and God's face was as far, as far removed from me as I could ever imagine. You ever been there before? That doesn't mean when bad things happen, God's punishing us. I'm talking more of the fact when we're not worshiping God like we should because we're walking down the wrong path. And our worship just seems blah. You know, and our, our sin is, is weighing us down and about to, about to knock us out. And we're disobeying God. That's the way Abram felt. Imagine that, that trek back from Egypt to Bethel. Must have been a long, long trek. He must have felt real bad because he knew what he did. And he wasn't worshiping God. But you know what he did? He remembered what it was like to worship God. And he just had to do everything he could to get back to that place. That's why he went back to that altar he originally built. And he found authentic worship in calling on the Lord's name. Again, that altar was a picture of Jesus Christ. May I say this as I close this morning, it's only when we get back to that altar that is Jesus Christ that we'll find eternal satisfaction, restoration renewed, and authentic worship. But, we've got to turn from that sinful path and we've got to get back to our first love. Let's pray this morning. Our Heavenly Father, we do ask that You would help us to repent of our sins, show us our sin, to get those that sin out of our lives, to turn from that path, that sinful path, and repent and get back to Jesus and find forgiveness. Get back to the altar that is Jesus Christ and find forgiveness in Him. Then and then, only then, will we find eternal satisfaction, restoration renewed, and authentic worship. As we sing in response to this message this morning, I pray indeed that our worship would be authentic. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.